Asset Owners Disclosure Project is the first global independent survey and rating of uh, the major asset owners of the world. These are the financial powerhouse of the world. They control about uh, 66, uh, 60 odd trillion dollars of uh, funds. Uh, they own more than 50% of all the listed companies and all the stock exchanges of the world. Uh, unfortunately, they invest about 55% of those funds in carbon intensive industries and only about 2% of those funds in uh, low carbon intensive industries. So, and yet, uh, investment's the key, really, to an effective response to climate change. Uh, you're going to see the new industries develop, the alternative technologies, the renewable industries, uh, the energy efficiency, industry, efficiency industries and so on. You're going to have to have a, a significant increase in investment. And with only 2% of these funds going to uh, low carbon industries, it's not enough. So the strategy is to work from the top down and the bottom up on these asset owners to see if we can get them to increase that 2% to maybe 6%. That'll be enough uh, really to generate globally enough investment funds to uh, meet the requirements of an effective response to climate change. Something of a technological revolution that should see new industries, new companies, new jobs and so on. The survey uh, actually uh, is seeking transparency on uh, how they uh, manage climate risk in particular. And secondly, why they invest way, the way they do in uh, a concentration on carbon intensive industries. Uh, we think that the rating will actually name, uh, shame, uh, and embarrass some of these uh, asset owners into changing their, their investment behaviour. And so they should. I mean, the risk of a catastrophic climate event is very real. Uh, global warming is already running ahead of most of the pessimistic scientific uh, estimates of just a couple of years ago. So, uh, you know, we need an urgent response. We need to accelerate that response. And governments around the world are not doing that. Uh, they're underpricing risk, uh, and uh, they're not um, they're not uh, driving the process of pricing carbon or developing uh, efficient carbon trading markets and so on. So, uh, we think that by mobilising investment is the, is the most effective way to do that. So, these asset owners are in a position to change their behaviour. They should. Uh, it is a risk. It's a portfolio risk. They can't lay it off in financial markets. They can't uh, hedge it. They can't insure it. The most effective way they can handle it is to increase the percentage they invest in low carbon industries while, uh, you know, as an offset, if you like, to give out their investing in high carbon industries. So the top down is to survey them and rate them. The bottom up is a, a social media platform called The Vital Few, which empowers fund uh, members and beneficiaries to contact their trustees, their directors, and ask them how they're managing climate risk, ask them why they're investing so heavily in carbon intensive industries. And, these uh, directors and trustees have a fiduciary duty, responsibility to actually answer those questions and we think raising those issues at board level should, uh, should do the job. So pressure from the top down, pressure from the bottom up. Over time we think this rating will actually, uh, will actually do the job. I've done a lot of experience in, in uh, trying to raise investment money for a lot of these alternative technologies, these new emerging industries. It's tough. I think if we can change the attitudes at board level, I think we will go a long way to changing the whole balance of the investment equation uh, internationally. So uh, I would say this is the most significant uh, new initiative to hit the climate change debate in a very long period of time. Uh, we think it can actually drive the process. And we think uh, because it's beyond government, it's something that the private sector can do by just doing what they should be doing, being transparent about how they manage climate risk and, uh, and accountable for how they manage climate risk. And in that process, obviously, stimulating the available investment funds to respond appropriately.